I'm Elise Bowman. I'm the voice of Pan on Dragon Ball GT and Momiji's mother on Fruits Basket. And I am with John Swayze. And you're watching Anime Adventures. Yes, this is the show where I bring you interviews with anime voice actors. And you have so many great characters. And I Thank can't you. wait to talk about your characters. Thank so you. stay tuned. John and I are at the Plus Ultra Expo. In Plano, Texas. In Plano, Texas. Not plain old Texas. <laughs> Plano. Plano, yes. Yes. Big difference. Big difference. So let's talk All right. My Hero Academia. Yeah, crazy stuff, isn't it? Crazy, crazy stuff. stuff. I love your I, villainous character. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I have made a, been very fortunate to make a career out of playing villains. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Everyone, um, you know, everyone likes a hero, but if there's no bad guy, the hero has nothing to do. That's so true. What would we do without villains? That's right. We help the bad guy. We yes. help the good guys. Yeah, the bad you guys. The, and, well, you we help the, the bad, bad guys, guys too. too. So, um, your character on My Hero. Yes, all for one. Awful. Uh, sort of the mastermind, big bad, uh, evil villain that is in control of everything. Um, and what I love about, one of the things I love about him is he's one of those characters that no matter what happens, no matter, like, right, I don't know if I should say where he is right now. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Oh, we but, won't spoil but, it, but, just but, in but, case. But no matter what happens, mm -hmm. he's always, you know, it's like I could put on glasses and they break. Mm -hmm. Now, ordinarily, I'd go like, oh, no. But all for one would go, exactly as I planned. <laughs> you know, it's just everything that happens it's like that's part of his plan, no matter what it is. So, you know, he's a very positive villain. He's, the glass is always half full for him. So you're saying there's something we can learn from him. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's a, he's a can-do, positive, go-getter. <laughs> a can-do, positive, go-getter villain. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a good With term. a great mask. With a, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have it here. Uh, you know, we're at, of course, at our table yes. and um, signing stuff. I've got some cool stuff. But somebody yesterday brought me a potato with a mask over it and these rings in it that look like the, these what? things here. And I was like, it's like all for Spud. <laughs> and uh, I was going to auction it off, but I ended up giving it to some kid. Oh, you gave it away. I was yeah, going to say you should I, text I'm, me a picture. I wish I did. Oh, I wish we had a picture of that. That would All be awesome. All for Spud. Yeah. All for oh, Spud. Well. Live oh, and learn. That's so great. <laughs> um, well, so my hero, gosh, it, people just really connect with it. What do you think that is? Like, what is that connection? You know, that's a... That that's a million dollar question, it man. Is, isn't I, it, right? I have been working in anime for 20, coming up on 23 years. Mm -hmm. And I've worked on some big shows. Uh, uh, Evangelion, I play Gendo. He's another evil villain, this guy. Right here. Right there. And they're doing a, there's actually a reboot on Netflix. Uh, Ray Chase plays uh, uh, my character. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, I worked on uh, Hohenheim on Full Metal Alchemist. That was another big show. And, and there's just been tons of big shows. But I've never seen anything like this. I mean, and, and I, for the life of me, I can't figure out why it's that big. I mean, it's a good show. Yes. I get it. But there's a lot of good shows, you know? And it's like, why did this one resonate, with resonate and mm. latch into the claw, or latch its claws into the psyche of the world. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I guess it's, um, you know, with like the quirks and stuff, somebody was telling, we were talking about this the other day, and, you know, there's these quirks, right? Right. Even though they're powers, it's interesting they call them quirks. Um, because, you know, when you think of quirks, you think of something peculiar. Yeah, like, something a, odd. He's got an odd quirk. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think, it, to me, I don't know, it's just, you know, in this world of anime, we're a bunch of geeks and freaks and quirky people. Yeah. And um, it's like, you know what? Uh, we all get along though and we all support each other and lift each other up and it's a beautiful thing. 
And I, I don't know, maybe that people like tap into that, you know, because it's that that quirkiness really that makes you an individual yeah. and gives you, you your uniqueness and yeah. makes you special. Absolutely. I agree. I yeah. think you're absolutely spot on. I think that I love Oh, that I'm spot on. Oh, you are. Okay. Well, <laughs> glad we've got that. Yeah. That we all agree on that. Out spot. Out. <laughs> little Shakespeare for you kids out there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, let's talk about fairy tale. Fairy tales, so Hades, another mm-hmm. uh, another villain. I, I, you know, I don't do the 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 standard tropes of anime. The the young kids, mm-hmm. you know, I don't have that voice. I'm always playing older, gruffer things like this, you know, um, which is fine. I, you know, I'm I'm glad to be cast, of course. Um, well, they need all of the different sounds, right. and all of the different voices. Right, right, yes. right. Uh, but uh, yeah, Hades was a fun character. He, uh, I haven't done him in a while. It's been been a while since we've worked on it. I think his story arc is over. Okay. So. Oh, too bad. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But well, a, a friend of mine made this. Oh, really? Yeah. And this is the... Oh, the original? This is the original here. Ooh, that's she nice. Wait, hand painted it. Is this Sarah Dunn? Yes. Oh, she's a friend of mine, too. She yes. did one for me, too. I recognize her, her the Her husband... Artwork. Uh, Kyle yes, is my handler. He's sitting right here. I stole his yeah. seat, actually. Mm-hmm. To you're do... much better looking, by the uh, way. Well, thank you. And y- it, you know what? To add insult to injury for me, uh, I've been like, I've had panels and stuff, uh-huh. and uh, people have walked up and thought he was me. Oh, that's right. And they started asking him yeah. about your character stuff. And I, I hear he did a pretty good job. He answering did. He the did. He um, might get replaced. And I, I, I should get replaced. Um, I was sitting here and he was gone. Uh, and somebody walked up and goes, do you know when John's coming back? <laughs> like, yeah, I know when he's coming back. I, I'm right here. I'm right here. But yeah, we should do a shout out to Sarah. She was oh, yeah. one of my very first talented. interviews very, yes, very as talented. an artist. So I love both yeah. of them. Yeah, I recognized her work immediately. I'm surprised I didn't recognize it as the print. Well, it's upside down. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. And then, oh wait, I wanted to talk about this one first. Um, who's your daddy? <laughs> so many dad characters. This is hilarious. Yeah. Um, so when I started doing the prints, you know, all these people have all these prints of individual ones. And I was yeah. like, you know, I've just got so many characters and I've just been very blessed and very fortunate. Um, I've got the, the distinction um, on Anime News Network. News Network. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, if you look up, Mike McFarland pointed this out to me. Oh, really? Uh, if you go to Encyclopedia and People and uh-huh. Most Prolific Cast, I am the number one male prolific oh. male voice actor in North America. I did see that, actually. <laughs> that was... and $5 will get me a Starbucks. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, Monica Rial is number one. Lucy Christian is number two. And I'm number three, but I'm the number one male. That is awesome. It's like 500 rolls or something like that. But, it's that you know, it's, it's because it is. Wow. But it, it's because uh, in 1997, I stumbled into a studio called ADV Films in Houston, Texas. Yes. And they were doing this thing called anime. And I was like, what's anime? You know, and it's like, well, it's Japanese animation. I'm like, well, I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> They're like, well, <laughs> like, we like, dub it news. into English. And then, uh, you know, just weirdness of weirdness, they became the number one producer of anime in North America. Mm-hmm. And then this little company up north in Dallas opened up called Funimation. Called Funimation. And then yes. now they're the kings, and ADV is now rebranded. They're now called Sentai mm-hmm. Filmworks, and where I work now full time as a director and a voice actor and, yeah. and whatnot. But, uh, you know, between Houston and Dallas, we produce more anime in North America than anywhere else in the world, Isn't except, that well, crazy? in the world, in North America. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, it's crazy. Uh oh. Got- somebody bombing me here? Yeah. I don't know which video will be real. Hello, Robert McCollum. <laughs> I don't know which video Payback, will be released baby. first. John photo bo- or video bombed Robert. He's video bombing you. Yeah. Where is he? Well, you'll have to play them oh, back. You'll have to play them back to back. Whichever I'll goes have first, to do you'll have to do them back to back. back. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you can see. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. He's but a yeah, good guy. He is. Yeah, I've known him a long time. It is funny. Oh, what were we talking about? Oh, it, it, it is interesting that so much of the anime is done right here in Texas. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I love and, it. And so to that, the reason yeah. I, I play a lot of, again, I'm not that the young kid. I'm the father. Um, I was doing a convention one time, and, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I've done, 
when you go into the studio and you go into one studio and you work and then you jump into another studio and you work and you go back and you're ping pong and all over, sometimes you don't really remember who you're doing or what you're doing. You just go in and do it. Yeah. And I was doing a convention one time down in, uh, in uh, South Texas in uh, uh, Corpus Christi. And um, it, uh, Vic was there and uh, J. Michael Tatum. And it was a uh, Oren High School panel. Mm -hmm. And the room is packed. And we're the only, like, it was only four guests and we're three of them. And uh, <laughs> I walk in a little late and they're holding court, making everybody laugh and doing a great job. <laughs> yes. And I was so tired. I was just like, hey, Michael, who do I play in this show? <laughs> and he's like, you're Vic's dad. I'm like, of course I am. <laughs> I'm always someone's dad. Aww. So I so you made a, a card made called Who's Your Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> These are all poster. anime dads that I played. That's so great. I need to do a close-up of that at some point. So. And one more, and then I want to talk about directing mm -hmm. because we haven't always talked about that on the show sure. and I get so many questions about directing. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. I didn't even know what was on here when I picked it up. So this is a print that I did. It's probably the characters other than All for One, mm -hmm. which I made this print before I even started doing that. Uh, that I'm probably best known for. So there's Salvador from Borderlands 2, Hohenheim from Full Metal Alchemist, where I also played Vic's dad, uh, <laughs> Undertaker from Black Butler, then we have Crocodile from One Piece, uh, Gendo from Evangelion, and then uh, Lord Death from Soul Eater. Oh, so those are probably, I guess, the most iconic roles. I really should have a thing that just is like Soldier B. This is Soldier B. I played Soldier B. <laughs> That's funny. That's what Robert and, said. Like I should have one. Yeah. Or a demo of just random characters yeah, that yeah, I've just, done. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that, going back to what the Anime News Network thing, when I started doing anime, you know, there just weren't that many actors doing it. And it's a, you know, number one, you have to be an actor. But number mm -hmm. two, there is a skill set involved, as you well know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just doing voices, it's it's acting, but getting the mechanics of uh, you know, listening to the beep system or doing the chase method, you know, whatever it might be when you're dubbing, you know, it's a skill, yes, right? It is, yeah. And um, so there just weren't that many actors down in Houston that got it. And so I would consequently where, you know, a Chris Ayer or a Chris Greg Ayers uh, mm -hmm. would do the hero kid because he's got the kid voice. I would play like 15 other characters in the show. Wow. So it would just, you know, it was just kind of by proxy, I guess. I just was able to do a lot of stuff so it's but not that's cool to have the range where you could actually do 15 different characters sure sure it is yeah i mean i you know when i started acting i started acting professionally in 1987 when i graduated from college i am old thank you and um i uh i had, would have never dreamed in a million years that i would be sitting here with you doing an interview that in plano so texas cool. it is cool it's like this is just where the career brought me yeah. you know what i mean so um, it's, yeah, it's really cool. That's I'm, I'm really awesome. I feel very blessed and very privileged to be here with you and all these amazing actors. And yeah, it's great. Yeah, so. I feel the same way. And you know, you mentioned directing. I want to talk about directing because mm -hmm. that is such a cool thing to be doing as well. And you've directed off and on anime direct. Let's right, talk about right. yeah, your yeah, work yeah. as an anime director. It's about 2003. Really? Yeah. Um, Started off with ADV Films, mm -hmm. uh, directing. I was working at night. Um, <laughs> and we had a, just much like Funimation does, we had uh, studios, five studios running from nine in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. And four o'clock was the shift change. Oh, okay. So you'd work, if you were a director during the day, you worked nine to four. And if it, you were at night, you worked four to 10. Wow. And uh, I was at, in the evening. And um, worked there for a couple of years. Then the anime business kind of dipped and uh, they let me, I just, I was a contractor. So they just, we don't have a show for you. It wasn't like I got fired. Yeah. But then when, you know, a couple of years later, oh, we got shows again, you know, and here we go. And then, so it kind of did a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. um, but then once, you know, stuff started coming out on streaming and, mm -hmm. and, you know, back in the day, this is how old I am. Back in the day, we used to get our anime delivered to us on VHS tapes. VHS, yes. Yeah. Not beta, VHS. And um, there would be four episodes per wow. tape. Yeah. And they were like 25, 30 bucks. So to watch a whole series was gonna cost you like $200. Mm -hmm. Now for $5 a month, you can watch more anime than you'll ever watch in a <laughs> lifetime. 
So, Well, you know, it kind of makes me think of the difference between how anime and how a director would operate at mm -hmm. the beginning and how you operate as a director now. Can you talk about the simuldub, simuldub process and how different it is directing now and how fast your process has to be? Sure, sure. So yeah. there's, um, first of all, I, I want to make the distinction. At Sentai, we dub things a little differently. Oh, okay. Um, oh, so yeah, at Funimation, tell us the difference. Funimation uses a more traditional method of beeps, mm -hmm. where you hear a beep, 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 and then you start speaking on the fourth silent beep. Oh, so that's good to know. I don't think we've talked about that on my show and, yet. And then, but in Houston, we do what we refer to as a chase method, where we go, okay, you, you're looking at the time code on your script. There's a time code window in the video. And we go record, and it gives you a three-second pre-roll. And then when you hear your character start to talk, you just start doing your lines. Okay. Um, another thing is is that uh, a lot of directors at Funimation, and by the way, I, I don't, I'm not saying one method is better than the other. Right. Well, everybody it, has it, everyone a different has their own process. Thing, yeah. Yes. But they'll they'll do like a couple lines at a time. You know, they'll preview it. They'll do a couple lines at a time, then review it, then move on. Um, in Houston, we'll actually go through a whole episode and just let you do it, really? and just and just see what you want to do. And then we'll go back through it, we'll do a soft sync and try to match it up. And then if we want to retake stuff, we'll redo it, redo it, redo it. And um, it's kind of an interesting, it's, to me it's a little more organic. Okay. And you get, you know, like, and I, we did, were doing a movie one time and uh, we had all the actors come in and uh, it's called Pona, Yona Yona Penguin. It's a cute mm -hmm. little CG movie, kids movie. And uh, Monica Rial played the little girl. It's kind of a fantasy type movie. Yeah. And she played the little girl, and she was the last one to record. And she had like 800 cues. Wow. In this that's movie. A lot. Yeah. And so we had recorded everybody, sunk everybody. I mean, it was like all we have left to do is record Monica. So we went in. She came in, got in the booth, and she's an anomaly anyway. She's amazing. <laughs> I uh, the engineer hits record, and we just watched the movie while she did it. Really? Messed up one time. What? And we just sunk it all in and it fit perfectly. It was amazing. The most amazing experience that as a director is... I've ever had. Oh, shout out. And, wow, uh, that is crazy. But yeah, I but so I really like that method just because I like to get through an episode. Now you mentioned simul dubs. Yeah. So Funimation pretty much um, exclusively, for the most part, I guess, does a simul dub, meaning they're dubbing an episode a week of a mm -hmm. show. Uh, in Houston, we, while we do some of those, we also uh, will do an entire season at once. Oh, okay. Like kind of more like in the old days, when like it would the, be like, we're doing episodes one through 12 or one through 24. Mm -hmm. So if I had you in um, and you played a character that might have 10 lines in episode one, 50 lines in episode two, you know, blah, 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 all the way, and it totals to about yeah. 450 cues, I would have you come in. Um, and what we do is also, we, uh, a cue can be anything from, uh, now listen, it's important that we get out of here before they show up. If we don't, you know, just this monologue, and a cue could also be, <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it averages itself out. But we, we, I, we average about, anywhere between 50 to 100 cues an hour. Okay, oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. we, we uh, and, but it's, we have to be careful because we need, we, we don't want to penalize somebody for being good and fast. You know, and we don't want to go too fast because you can miss stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, That's interesting. so we, yeah, so we, we just, we don't, we don't like to go too fast, but we, we do uh, move at a pretty good clip. Wow. So, and it's, it's, it's when I bring down actors from Dallas, they're kind of like, what, what am I doing? I don't, I, there are no beeps. I don't hear anything. It's just, it's all good. Yeah, I had, I had uh, so doing a show the other day and uh, Johnny Young Bosch was in Houston uh -huh. filming a movie and he had to do some pickups for something or a couple episodes of a show he was working on. And uh, so he came into our studio and I, I directed him because I, I know him and um, he was just like, we're doing what? How do we do this again? I don't, you know, so, but he, he got it, man. He was great. He, he was a real pro. But yeah, so there's different methods and different ways. And like I said, one is not superior over the other. It's not that. It's more of just a, you know, how comfortable you are doing it a particular way. That's so, it. I, I, it's fascinating to hear the differences and the different processes. Well, and as a director, you know, um, there's two things or numerous things. But 
you know, we're just dubbing this. You know, we're not going in and changing emotional states and content and context and all this stuff. It is what it is, right? Yeah. So as an actor, um, I learned this from Zach Bolton at Funimation um, when I did Lord Death. Because, uh-huh. again, I play a lot of characters that are, you know, talk like this and, you know. And when I auditioned for Soul Leader, they mm-hmm. said, uh, you know, I said, what's the character? And they were like, Lord Death. And I was like, of course, Lord Death. You know, it's going to be like this. Mm-hmm. And I started to audition. And Zach Bolton was the director. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, listen to what the Japanese actor is doing. And it was way up here like this. So I said, oh, OK. So I started doing that. And uh, I learned kind of a lesson that, you know what, as much as I want to bring my own vision, if you will, to the mm-hmm. table, I'm not the one that created this role. The mm-hmm. Japanese actor is. Mm-hmm. So I would be doing him a disservice if I said, well, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. I need to not mimic him, but stay within that, that realm, range. that range, yeah. you know, to create it. And if you think about it, I mean, if I made something and it got dubbed into German, I wouldn't want the German actor to just go off on this like, crazy yes. little thing, yeah. you know. I'd yeah. be like, well, that's not the character, you know. Yeah. So, um, And th- so that helps me as a director because I like to, when I'm working with an actor, you know, let's find the voice but then I really like to just let the actor do what they do. I've, I have found, life lesson kids, gather around. If you want to succeed at anything, you don't necessarily have to know how to do it. All you have to know is how to hire the right people that know how to do it and manage them. And then when it's a hit, take all the credit. That's all you got to do. That's all it is. Managing, project management, that's what life is. And uh, so I just let the actors do what they do best and let the engineer do what he does best. And if I, if it works for me, I'm happy and we're off, you know, it's all good, so. so, What a great life lesson. And speaking of project management, my uh, question for you, I wanna talk about conventions as my final little subject because you have a different perspective on that too. You run Anime Dallas and you are the founder so let's hear your perspective on conventions. So, sure, sure. So I've been doing conventions uh, for a, year, a few years, you know. As an actor. As an actor. As a, yes. um, when I started doing anime, like I said, back in 97, there might, I remember there might, somebody was like, I think it was Matt Greenfield. Uh, he was talking about, he was getting married to Tiffany Grant. And they said, we're flying in people. And I was like, well, that's got to be expensive. And he said, oh, no, no, man, Tiffany's got miles. It's like, really? Go, oh yeah, she goes to these conventions. And I'm like, conventions? What are you talking about? <laughs> so back in back then there might be two or three a month, you know? Mm-hmm. Now there's like six and seven a week all over the world. Crazy, yeah. And it's just crazy. And um, so I was approached um, by a hotel in Dallas that said we would like you to put on a convention. And so I called up a few friends of mine that know how to run conventions. And I said, do you want to do this? And they were like, yeah. So I'm really the face of the convention. And I've got a partner, Jacob Lipman, mm-hmm. who Met him. knows how to run a convention. And he's my boots on the ground. And I've got a couple other key people uh, that are, you know, staffers and heads of staff and stuff like that. And I'm like, let's do this. And I just let them do what they know how to do. And I take all the credit. <laughs> So, um, so again, life lesson. But I, I will say, uh, so Anime Dallas, we started two years ago mm-hmm. here in Dallas. Um, it's at the um, uh, Hyatt out at DFW. Mm-hmm. And the first year we had 2,000 people. We raised money for Hurricane Harvey oh. down in Houston. Oh, really? And uh, raised about $8,000. Wow. And I uh, was very successful. Then this past December, last year, in ni- 2019, we had 3,800 people show really? up. Really? And we uh, picked a new charity um, called Freedom Place. And this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, Freedom Place is a place in Houston that works to get uh, girls out of the sex trade. Oh, and, wow. Um, it's and it's a horrifying uh, statistic. Oh. Houston leads the way in sex trade. Really? Just because of its location, I guess, and it's a port oh. and it's... Anyway, I don't want to go down that mm-hmm. rabbit hole, but it's anyway. So we donated, we gave about uh, almost six thousand dollars to them this past year, wow. 
Wow. And uh, we, I plan to give more. You know, I want to get it to 10000 but that's going to be our new deal. So we're doing Anime Dallas. It'll be in December of 2020. And, um, you know, one of the great things is, is it's in Dallas. So I've got access to a huge selection of actors. And I say, come be part of the convention. And they're like, okay. Yes. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to mention, see if I can't get this girl at least come do it. Why, so, yes. <laughs> wow. That um, easy. <laughs> uh, but also the big news, and I don't know when this is coming out, but yeah. in August, we're doing the same thing. We're going to do Anime Houston. Oh, fantastic. So, uh, again, okay. found a hotel in Houston. It's another Hyatt and uh, forged a very good relationship with them. And, um, yeah, right. so we're doing that, and I hope to, you know, again, raise more money. And, and it's awesome because I crashed your party this year. Yeah. And it was fantastic and such a good turnout. And when we talked to people, everybody was having such a good time. So I highly recommend attending Anime Dallas, Anime Houston, if you can. One of the things about, and I, I, this is important to me as well, but mm -hmm. one of the things about doing this convention um, is my philosophy uh, is... You know, Texas leads the way in anime production, but we've got a ton of conventions here. Mm -hmm. And I think, my thought is, you know, it's when the tide comes in, all boats in the bay rise. Mm -hmm. So there's no competition. It's no, let's all help each other out and make it better, yes. bigger and better for everybody. Yes. So I, you know, want to have as many conventions that are in Texas come to my show and promote your show. You yes. know, that's what I want to do. Um, and uh, so, I'm, yeah, it's very, I'm very excited about it. But it's part of it, too, for me is just being a voice actor in this industry. I mean, I've seen things change dramatically. Oh, and so it's it's nice to be able to put this show on and, you know, walk around and kind of be the host. It's like being the host of a huge party. <laughs> you just going, y'all having fun? You having a good time? Good. Well, if you Woo. need anything, you let me know. That's, and, uh, uh, that's a great so, way to look at it. Yeah. So anyway, it's been fun so far. So that's I'm really awesome. excited about it. Well, I can't wait. Well, this has been fun. Speaking of fun, this has been fun. Thank it you has so been fun. much. You're fun. Thank, oh, thank you. You're and fun. That you're fun. Thank you for being here. I would love for you to subscribe. I've got so many more great conversations coming up. I think we should say bye in your character voice. Bye in my character voice. Bye in his character voice. Yours is better. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> High five. All right.